Hey, welcome to Hack and Build. Today I'm going to be showing you my DIY studio shop lighting. I plan on using this lighting for shooting videos as well as when I'm working on projects in my workshop. I have two different versions of the light, one with a dimmer switch and one without a dimmer switch, and I'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between the two lights a little later on to see if there's any noticeable differences between the two. Also compare it to my current studio lighting, which is just simple full-spectrum fluorescent lighting and a diffusion umbrella. Also go into some of the design decisions I made when putting these lights together, such as the tripod mount that allows you to mount it on any standard tripod, and that allows you to position in a variety of different orientations. Also go into some of the construction details of putting these things together, but it's not going to be a complete how-to video. I do have all the footage from the build, so if you're interested in seeing a more step-by-step how-to video, definitely let me know, and if there's enough interest, I'll put a video together. Let's get into it. I built these lights primarily because I needed a compact light that I could use for shooting video in my small cramped basement. As it turns out, the compact size also makes them ideal for portable work lights. My 1000 watt halogen work lights have served me well over the years, but they're bulky and they get really hot. I think these will make a nice replacement for those work lights. Another consideration was cost. Neewer has some entry level lights that I initially considered but I had some reservations about quality and I wasn't a fan of the external power supply. That left the 500 LED option, but I really didn't want to spend over $100 for a single light including a stand. A DIY option could work, so I started by searching the web for some suitable parts. I settled on some 100 watt LED bulbs, a reflective chrome vanity fixture, and a compact dimmer switch for the basis of my lights. I had everything else I needed on hand, so putting these together was actually pretty cost effective for me. Let's take a look at the bill of materials. The non-dimmable version cost me about $25 to make, and the dimmable version cost me about $40 to make since I was able to pull some of the materials from scrap I already had on hand. The price does start to creep up a bit once you have the cord, wood, and tripod, and I don't think that the added cost of the dimmer switch and dimmable bulbs is really worth it. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's take a look at the overall construction of the lights. The frame is made from some scrap poplar boards I had laying around and then ripped down on the table saw to an inch and three eighths and then cut to length. As far as I'm concerned, this project calls for utility grade construction so I used my trusty finishing nailer and some wood glue to assemble the frame. I used some Feebing's black leather dye to give it a bit more of a finished look. This turned out fantastic and it dried very quickly so I'll definitely be using this on future projects. With the frame built, it was time to start assembling everything. I used some 8th inch Luan for the back panel and then made some shims out of plywood so it would sit flush with the back. The wood shims also give us a way to mount the panel to the frame and then a spot for the clamp connector to bite into. Some metal shims made from square brackets were also added to set the front panel to the correct depth. The holes for the wire clamp connector and the T-nut are then marked and drilled. Next, everything is wired up. Finally, the back panel is fitted into place and then tacked in with some finishing nails. The front panel is held in place by the circular chrome pieces and it can be removed again if needed. Mounting it on a tripod is simple and works best with a quick release plate. This inexpensive tripod from Amazon comes with its own quick release plate. Since the T-nut is a little proud of the back panel, I made a rubber washer from a piece of bicycle tube. It's a little janky, but it works quite well. The nice thing about these tripods is their range of motion and adjustability. It's a lot more flexible than my other light stands, though it's not quite as heavy duty. The other big plus to this setup is its size. It's a lot more compact. The stand and light combined are only 19 and 3 quarters inches long compared to 31 inches. That's nearly a 40% size reduction. Now we're going to compare the two versions of the DIY light against the cheap studio lights. Here's a chart showing the specifications of the two different kinds of bulbs we're using. From the specs we can expect the DIY lights to be a little less bright than the full spectrum fluorescence, but we'll see in a minute. For the test itself, I've placed the camera about 5 feet in front of the lights. I'm sitting about 3 feet in front of the camera. For each test I've done my best to keep the camera and the lights in the same position. We'll look at the two different lights and compare it with my full spectrum lighting. 
And this is the studio lighting that I typically use. It's the full spectrum fluorescent lighting with the diffuser umbrella. And here's what the light looks like without the diffuser. As you can see, it's casting a few shadows. This one's from my digital audio recorder. And here's how things look with just the ambient lighting. Here's what the dimmable version looks turned up all the way. It's creating this really annoying strobing effect. And here's what the dimmable version looks like turned down just a little bit so that the strobing stops. Here's the non-dimmable DIY version without the diffuser. And here's the DIY version with the diffusion umbrella. Catch all that? Let's do a side-by-side -side recap of everything. Here's the non-dimmable DIY version without the diffuser. And here's what the dimmable version looks like turned down just a little bit so that the strobing stops. It seems like the dimmable version is slightly brighter. I'd actually expected this one to be a little less bright because of the dimmer switch. I did use two different tripods for each light, so I'm guessing that the position of the lights might have been slightly different, yielding different results. This isn't a lab-grade experiment, so I'm going to consider the dimmable version and the non-dimmable version equivalent. In addition to the strobing effect, the dimmer has a really narrow adjustment band, maybe about a quarter turn worth of adjustability. Since the light isn't obnoxiously bright on full power, I don't even think the dimmer is needed. If you do find yourself in a situation where you have too much light, you could always just unscrew a bulb. Now we'll compare the studio lighting against the DIY lighting. There's some subtle differences in brightness here, and I'm also noticing a bit more shadow on the DIY light. Since I've used the same diffuser on both lights, this tells me that the position of the lights or the diffuser is slightly different. Since the colors were so close, I pulled up Photoshop's histogram plot of the color distributions. There's some slight differences here, but they're pretty close. Compare that to the same plot of the ambient lighting. There's a lot more peaks across the middle and upper end of the brightness spectrum. Since we noticed earlier that the video captured with the dimmable light was a bit brighter, let's compare that to the studio lighting. Here the DIY light actually looks a little brighter than the studio light, or at least the color is a bit different. Overall, these lights are going to work out very nicely for me, and I may even build myself another set. I like the flexibility of having the tripod that I can use for other things, and I like the more compact size a lot better than my current studio lighting. Overall, I'd say this was a success. Hey, and that's all there is to it. If you end up putting a couple of these lights together, I'd love to hear from you. Definitely leave a comment and let me know how they worked out for you. I've got a lot of great content coming up, so subscribe for more hacks and builds. We'll see you next time. Cheers.